Oneness of God, the Ultimate Solution to the Trinitarian Controversy Introduction Are you aware of the historical controversy between the Trinitarian and the Unitarian doctrines? Are you also aware that Islam offers the ultimate solution to such controversy? The Trinitarian controversy is one of the most crucial events in the annals of Christendom. World-renowned Christian historian Ed Ward Gibbon points out that the Trinitarian controversy, which raged particularly during the 4th century, has successively penetrated every part of the Christian world. Edward Gibbon, The Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire Volume 2 edition by J. B. Berry, New York, AMS Press Inc., 1974, page 355 on one hand, the Pauline Church, currently known as the Roman Catholic Church, has for centuries fought for the global acceptance of the Trinitarian doctrine. The concept of Trinity is the nucleus of the Athanasian Creed, which states that There is one person of the Father, another of the Son, and another of the Holy Ghost. But the Godhead of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost is all one, the glory equal, the majesty co-eternal. The Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Ghost is God. And yet they are not three gods, but one God. For like as we are compelled by the Christian verity to acknowledge every person by himself to be God and Lord, so are we forbidden by the Catholic religion to say there be three gods, or three lords. Ulfat Aziz Samad, Islam and Christianity, Riyadh, Presidency of Islamic Research, Ifta and Propagation, 1984, page 29. The nature of this creed has for centuries been so controversial and mysterious that even its own author, Athanasius of Alexandria, one of the principal leaders of the Pauline Church, failed to comprehend it. This champion of Trinity himself confessed that whenever he forced his understanding to meditate on the divinity of the Logos, his toilsome and unveiling efforts recoiled on themselves. That the more he thought, the less he comprehended, and the more he wrote, the less capable was he of expressing his thoughts. Edward Gibbon, Volume 2 OPCIT, pp. 360-361 The nature of the Trinity is so mysterious that, as Edward Gibbon remarks, as often as we deduce any positive conclusions from a negative idea, we are involved in darkness, perplexity, and inevitable contradiction. Libid. Page 361 on the other hand, the Apostolic Church has over the years advocated the belief in the unity of God, and as such ruled out the deity of Jesus, peace be upon him. Among those who originally opposed the Trinitarian doctrine were the so-called Ebionites of Nazarenes they considered Jesus as the greatest of the prophets, endowed with supernatural virtues and power. According to Edward Gibbon, the Ebionites Ascribe to his person, Jesus, and to his future reign all the predictions of the Hebrew oracles which relate to the spiritual Messiah some of them might confess that he was born of a virgin. But they obstinately rejected the preceding existence and divine perfections of the Logos or Son of God. Ibid. pp. 358-359 The mysteries of the Christian faith were dangerously exposed to public debate when Arius, the champion of apostolic church, popularly confronted Bishop Alexander the champion of the Pauline Church. These two were in hot theological dispute or a period of six years from 318 A.D. through 325 A.D. Arius, the disciple of Lucian of Antioch, the greatest critic of the Trinitarian doctrine, strongly advocated the view that God is absolutely one and alone eternal. Muhammad Adayuar Rahim, Jesus, Prophet of Islam, Riyadh, Presidency of Islamic Research, Ifta and Propagation, 1984, page 105. Such Unitarian view, which conformed to the original teachings of Jesus and all other prophets, peace be upon them all, had definitely exposed the Trinitarian doctrine to a critical controversial state. This, however, did not stop the Pauline Church from gaining control of large part of Christendom. This happened for known reasons discussed elsewhere. The next SEC tie-in presents the historical background of the Trinitarian controversy. Some Historical Notes on the Trinitarian Controversy The Trinitarian view of Christianity came into being many, many years after the disappearance of Jesus, peace be upon him. Undoubtedly, it was not professed by Jesus nor by the other prophets, peace be upon them all. As a matter of fact, the true followers of Jesus, peace be upon him, continued to affirm the oneness of God until about 90 AD. This belief in the unity of God was manifested in the Shepherd of Hermas. 
which was written during this period and regarded as a book of revelation by the earlier Christians. Aside from its precept on the oneness of God, this scripture also contains other related commandments on sincerity, truthfulness, purity, patience, uprightness, piety, and self-control. More specifically, the first of these commandments states, First of all, believe that God is one and that he created all things and organized them out of what did not exist made all things to be, and he contains all things, but alone is himself uncontained. Trust him therefore and fear him, and fearing him be self-controlled. Keep this command and you will cast away from yourself all wickedness, put on every virtue of uprightness, and you will live to God if you keep this commandment. E.J. Goodspeed, The Apostolic Fathers, 1950, quoted by Muhammad Atta Ah. Sit, 1984, page 46. The Apostles' Creed I believe in God the Father Almighty began to be known to the earlier Christians in 120 AD. The Word Father was, in fact, added to this creed only between 180 AD and 210 AD. A number of the apostolic church leaders condemned this innovation. For they found it abominable to inject new ideas into the original teachings of Jesus, peace be upon him. Ibid, page 7. One of the early leaders of the apostolic church was Irenaeus, who succeeded Bishop Pothinus of Lyons in 177 AD after the latter's brutal murder. In 190 AD, Irenaeus wrote to Pope Victor to stop the massacre of dissenting Christians whose belief did not agree with the doctrine of the Rome-based Pauline Church. Irenaeus believed in one God and supported the doctrine of the manhood of Jesus. Ibid, pages 74 to 75. Irenaeus and the rest of the early Unitarians abhorred the Trinitarian dogma, being a deviation from the pristine teachings of Jesus, peace be upon him. Prior to 200 AD, the term Trinity, which is now the nucleus of the Christian tenets, was not at all known to the Pauline Church. Trinity was derived from the Latin word Trinitus, which was first used by Tertullian in 200 AD to explain in Latin ecclesiastical writings the strange doctrine of the Pauline Church. Tertullian belonged to the African Church. He believed in the unity of God and identified Jesus with the Jewish Messiah. He opposed Pope Callistus for teaching that capital sin could be forgiven after doing canonical penance. Tertullian was the one who opened the way for a doctrine of salvation, at least partly by good works. A. M. Renwick, The Story of the Church, Bristol, InterVarsity Press, 1977, page 41. Indeed, those who belonged to the Apostolic Church A.C. set the plain meaning of the words spoken by Jesus, peace be upon him, as embodied in the earlier scriptures. Without resorting to mysterious dogmas, they continued to uphold the article of faith, I believe in God, the Almighty, until 250 A.D. Muhammad Atta Ur Rahim, Opsit, page 7. In his attempt to refute the Trinitarian view of Christianity, Lactanius, Orthodox father, wrote in 310 A.D. that Christ never calls himself God. In 320 A.D., Eusebius of Nicomedia wrote, Christ teaches us to call his Father the true God and to worship him. These early Unitarian leaders were courageous enough to expose their views to refute the Trinitarian dogmas in spite of the persecution campaign against them. Their real champion, however, was Arius who in 318 AD popularly opposed the Pauline view that Jesus was in reality the Son of God and consubstantial and co-eternal with the Father. One of the arguments propagated by Arius was, if Jesus was in reality the Son of God, then it followed that the Father must have existed before him, the Son. Therefore, there must have been a time when the Son, Jesus, did not exist. Therefore, it followed that the Son was a creature composed of an essence or being which had not always existed. Since God is in E.S. sense eternal and ever-existent, Jesus could not be of the same essence as God. Muhammad Atta Ur Rahim, Jesus, Prophet of Islam, page 88. In 321 AD, Arius popularly confronted Bishop Alexander the forerunner of the Pauline Church. In refuting the Trinitarian belief, Arius argued that God is absolutely one. God is alone and generate, alone eternal, alone without beginning, alone good, alone almighty. Alone unchangeable and unalterable, and that his being is hidden in eternal mystery from the outward eye of every creature. Libid, page 105. 
Four years later, in 325 AD, Emperor Constantine Khan venade the first general council at Nicaea, now called as Nik, a Turkish village in northwest Asia Minor. This council was attended by 318 bishops from Spain to Persia. 3 A.M. Renwick, The Story of the Church, Bristol, Intervarsity Press, 1977, page 54. Emperor Constantine allegedly aimed at reconciling the prelates, particularly Arius and Alexander, who were involved in the Trinitarian controversy. Bishop Alexander, however, could not attend this ecumenical council, so he delegated Athanasius to represent him and the fallen church. Although the council ratified the Trinitarian creed, the Proarians continued to practice their own Unitarian views. In 380 AD, Emperor Theodosius of Rome made the Orthodox Fane, the Trinitarian-based Catholic faith, obligatory for all his sub-JETS, hence the state religion since then. R. T. H. Van Leeuwen, Christianity and World History, The Meeting of the Faiths of East and West, Trans. By H. H. Hoskins, New York, Charles Scribner's Sons, 1964, pages 275-276. By 381, the Council of Constantinople, the second general council which was attended by 186 bishops, gave the finishing touch to the doctrine of three perons in one God. Emphatically, this council asserted the Godhead of the Holy Spirit. 5 a.m. Renwick the Story of the Church, Bristol, Intervarsity Press, 1977, page 55. By 383 a.d., Theodosius threatened to punish all who would not believe in the doctrine of Trinity. This threat, however, did not result in the total destruction of the Arian tenets. They have survived, and are still the foundation of the belief of many Unitarian Christians, Muhammad Atta Ur Rahim, op. Sit, page 106. In the 16th century, L.F.M. Satsini challenged John Calvin, the leader of the Protestant Reformation in Switzerland, on the doctrine of Trinity. Satsini denied the deity of Jesus and repudiated the original sin and atonement dogmas, Lonsdale and Laura Rag, ed. And trans. From the Italian MS in the Imperial Library at Vienna, The Gospel of Barnabas, Karachi, Begum Bawani Wakf, 1986, page 16. Another outspoken critic of the Trinitarian doctrine during the 16th century was Michael Servetus, who was regarded by many as the founder of modern Unitarianism. Muhammad Atta Ur Rahim, op. Sit, page 119. He lived at a time when the Roman Catholic Church was in chaos. This situation brought about the emergence of the Protestant reformists such as Martin Luther and John Calvin. Servetus, however, found the reformists' views fundamentally at variance with the teachings of Jesus, peace be upon him, particularly that of the belief in the unity of God. So, in 1531 AD, he published a book entitled The Errors of Trinity, in which he writes, the philosophers have invented a third separate being truly and really distinct from the other two, which they call the third person, or the Holy Spirit. Three beings in one nature, admitting therefore these three, which after their fashion they call persons, they freely admit a plurality of beings, a plurality of entities, a plurality of essences, a plurality of substances, and taking the word God strictly, they will have a plurality of gods. Quoted by Muhammad Atta Ur Rahim, op. Sit, page 117. Because of his relentless belief in the oneness of good, Servetus was thrown into prison in Geneva on a charge of heresy. Subsequently, he was put to death slowly under the torment of fire. One of his followers, Castillo, expressed his feeling ostensibly in a melancholic tone, to burn a man is not to prove a doctrine. Libid, page 116. In the 17th century, John Biddle, the leader of Unitarianism in England, published a pamphlet entitled, Twelve Arguments Refuting the Deity of the Holy Spirit, Lbid, page 142. In 1645 AD, Biddle was imprisoned for his Unitarian view. Later he was summoned to appear before the Parliament, but he firmly denied the Deity of the Holy Spirit. In 1648 AD, a severe ordinance was passed stating that anyone who denied the Trinity, or the divinity of Jesus, or the Holy Spirit, would suffer death without the benefit of the clergy. Libid. In today's modern world, those who cling to the Trinitarian doctrine identify themselves as Christians largely to quench their thirst for religion. Most of them do not deny the mysterious nature of the Trinity, which is devoid of human logic and scientific explanation. 
This emanates from the hard fact that it was the masterpiece of Athanasius. In other words, it was a human innovation of the worst kind, which is nothing but blasphemy against God and his Unitarian attribute. Unfortunately, most of the Christians are not even aware that such a mysterious doctrine was so controversial for many centuries, particularly during the reign of Emperor Constantine. Many Christians only know Constantine as a hero. Let it be known, however, that Constantine largely due to political con side ration was merely one of those who played roles of various sorts on the Trinitarian controversy. As a matter of fact, other Roman emperors and key religious leaders in Christendom, particularly during the 4th century, were involved in the Trinitarian crisis in one way or another. How they got involved in this crisis is discussed in the next section.